Hello, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher, I can. Good evening, teacher. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I had issues with the app. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Zoom, but it seems like, like that I have an issue with the audio. But listen, ahora sí todos me escuchan? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Please, yes. English, no Spanish. I just want to confirm. Okay, guys, listen. Uh, thank you so much for confirming. I don't know what was happening, but now I'm here. <laughs> okay. Good. Very good. So, is everybody ready to start? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, it's Monday. Tell me, what's your weekend? Uh -huh. How was your weekend? What do you do? Anything interesting? Uh huh. Uh huh. Hello. Tell me, what do you do during the weekend? Nothing? You didn't do anything? Nothing, teacher. Nothing. Oh, my goodness. And you guys? Anyone else? I can see only Hos uh, Hosman with the camera on. And the rest of you guys? Tell me, what do you do during the weekend? One point. <laughs> yeah, extra point for you, Hosman. <laughs> ah, I can Thank see. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hosman, how was your weekend? I I was uh, working the weekend. Mm -hmm. I am very uh, boring and tomorrow relaxing. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. And you, Lorena, how was your weekend? Um, I gave a shower to my pet. Mm. It's perfect. Well, uh, you can say just I bathe my dog. Okay, I bathe my dog. Okay. Your dog is the husky that appears sometimes. Yes. <laughs> I know it's it's very beautiful. <laughs> I like it. And Wilbur, only work, Wilbur. No teacher, I was here in my house. Ah. I just uh, watch TV. Mm, okay, mm. and work on the platform, right? The platform is ending. Excellent, excellent. Did you review the topics? everyone yes teacher about the topics i try to watch uh, some videos on the platform on the mobile platform but uh, i don't know it has a issue uh in which exercise specifically no uh, i watch the videos classes ah you want to watch the videos yes but on the mobile platform and I can see that. Mm, do you mean the videos, the recordings? Yes, yes, oh, the classes. You, you can watch it on YouTube. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you have the link for that? Uh, no. Okay, no worries. Let's do something. Right now in the group, guys, I'm going to send the link of YouTube, okay? In that link, you can see uh, the classes, okay? Uh, let me send it right now. So on WhatsApp, you will find that link. Uh, that is a playlist that we have on YouTube. So there you can see the date. Look for the date that the class that you want to see. It is the date and it is the topic that we studied. So click it there and you can watch all the classes. Okay. Very good. Now, I have some news that I want to share with you. Today, well, this week is the last one, okay? Basically. But if you remember, we had one day off. Do you remember the one day off that we had? It was Friday. Yes? Do you remember that day off? Mm. Yes? No. 
Okay, listen, I'm going to explain this in Spanish porque no quiero confusiones. Um, tuvimos un asueto que fue el día viernes, un viernes 7, no sé si se acuerdan, 7 de julio. Yes. Los juegos. Really? Exactly, fue por los juegos. Ay, now you don't remember, Nelson. <laughs> But listen, the point is, debido a que tuvimos ese asueto, right, esta es nuestra última semana, pero tenemos que reponer un día más por el asueto que tuvimos, ¿ok? Así que um, ese día lo vamos a reponer el próximo lunes, ¿entendido? Es decir, que nuestro último día de clases será el próximo lunes 31 de agosto. I mean, 31 de julio, I'm sorry. So, y luego ustedes se quedan en la semana de vacations y, bueno, ya su siguiente nivel estarían informando cuándo iniciaría. ¿Ok? ¿Understood? Understood. Perfect. So, when is the last day? Next Monday. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. So this is the way, guys, this is the last week. So remember that by Friday, by this coming Friday, the platform for everybody has to be done. Okay. Some of you already finished the platform and that's excellent. But the rest of you, there are some people over there that hasn't finished the platform. So please try to work hard. Well, Let's start. I'm going to share uh, the presentation. We have some topics that we need to try to, to develop today. Uh, let's see, let's see. Everybody, can you see the presentation? Yes? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So today is July 24th. This is the week five. Today we are going to finish the unit number three, okay? And this is the topic. We are going to explain safety measures related to different processes at a warehouse. So basically we are going to be talking about safety measures. This is the class objective. I need a volunteer please for reading the class objective. Me teacher. Go ahead. Uh, participants will be able to understand vocabulary related to safety measure at a warehouse. Thank you. Excellent. So, I have some questions for you. Think about your job. Okay? Think about your company. Think about the place you work. What kind of dangerous materials or dangerous chemicals you can find mm -hmm. and imagine if you work in a warehouse what kind of dangerous materials can you find there what do you think any ideas uh, teacher mm -hmm. In my company, we 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 use uh, the chemical peroxido, uh -huh. and this chemical is a dangerous chemical. It is. And we have a warehouse, a special warehouse, because th this chemical is explosive. Oh my goodness. So it's, it's paradise. Paradise, okay. Oh, sorry, it's, it's opposite, it's like this. In in how how do you handle the peroxide? How, how do you handle that material? Do you have uh, specific rules? Yes, and when the, when this chem, this chem, chemical, <laughs> chemical, the, chemical, uh, arrive in our company mm -hmm. uh, our team of industrial security um uh, always they are in the in the place and he are look he 
looks, how is the handle about the, the this chemical? Okay. And the transportation uh, has a, a specific uh, security. Specific uh, like steps, instructions. Correct, correct. <laughs> Okay, it's yes. very dangerous. So imagine, guys, uh, that is a clear example of dangerous material or dangerous chemicals. What else? Can you give me another example, guys, of dangerous material or dangerous chemicals that you can find in your job or in a warehouse? What do you think? In my last job, uh... May use chlorhydric acid, oh my caustic God. soda, um, some acid mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. treatment of um dangerous um how do you say the setters? Uh, let me check. I forgot. It's a poible. It's a what? It's a poible. I don't remember. Okay, you can say just waste. Waste mm -hmm. or waste, waste test if it is in plural, like I'm mm -hmm. going to write it, it's like this waste test yes. if it is in plural. Okay, yes. and how do you handle with those chemicals? Uh, use a uh, glove, special gloves, mm -hmm. um, go goggles in the same goggles? special, uh huh, goggles, um, helmet. Um, uh, a special clothes, and uh, uh, um, maybe uh, I don't know how to describe because it's a special material that the acid can't um, uh, broke. Okay. So basically, if you see, if you have these dangerous chemicals, you need to have. A specific clothes, right? Special clothes. Exactly. A specific equipment so you can handle with those chemicals. That's interesting. So besides the chemicals, is there any other dangerous materials, guys, that you can find in your job or in a warehouse? Sometimes in a warehouse use a poison for rat. Maybe it's common for yeah. protection of the product. And, if, and that is totally dangerous. Very dangerous. What else? Anyone else? Another dangerous material? Okay, so I'm asking this because that is specifically what we are going to be talking about. We are going to talk about different um, dangers that we can find. And also we are going to see some security measures. Okay, that's the idea. We are going to discuss that. Uh, can you see the presentation or not? Right now, no teacher. Yes. Yes, we can see. Excellent. Okay, let's see. We are going to practice reading, but before that, let's see some vocabulary. We have the first phrase that is long run. Have you ever heard that phrase? Long run. What do you think? What is the meaning of long run? Look at that. Any idea? Long run. What do you think? No idea? Really? I don't know what is the meaning about all the, the, the words teach. Okay, no worries. We are going to discover the meaning right now. Okay, long run. Imagine if I say, okay, guys, uh, you need to do the homework for tomorrow. Is that a short period of time or a long period of time? You have to do the homework for tomorrow. Tomorrow is a short period of time? 
Yes, teacher is yes. short. It's short period, right? But if I say, okay, guys, in order to finish the platform, you have until next year. <laughs> is that short period or long period? It's long period. Long period. So long run is basically that. A long period of time. Is it clear? Yes. If you want to translate it, the translation will be largo plazo. Okay? Is it clear the meaning for long run? Yes, teacher. Okay. Now we have the next one. Absenteeism. What is the meaning of absenteeism? What do you think? Look at the picture. For example, Anna, present. Okay, Kevin, present. Eh, Osman, present. Eh, Carlos. Ah, Carlos is not here. So that is absenteeism. Is it clear? Absentismo? Yes, you say? exactly. That is the one. Clear the meaning of absentism? Yes. Excellent. Then we have equipment downtime. Equipment downtime. What do you think? What is that? Maybe when you lose time, when you are doing a maintenance, for example. That is the one, exactly. These guys is um the time that you have to wait because the equipment is on maintenance, okay? They are fixing, for example, computers, right? They are fixing computers, so you need to wait and you cannot use the computers, okay? If you are in a warehouse or imagine that you work in transportation, you cannot use the trucks because they are uh, under mechanics, for example. So that is equipment downtime. Got it? Yes? Teacher? Yes? It, is, it may be similar uh, out of order. Mm, could be. It depends because that it's um, when you say out of order, it can have seen another context too, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Teacher, yes. if they say that <laughs> no disponible. No disponible is closer. Actually, that meaning is more, is like closer from this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it clear the meaning for equipment downtime? Everyone? Not at all, teacher. Sorry. Okay. Equipment downtime, guys. Think about this. It's when the equipment is not working. Okay? So if it is not working, you cannot use that equipment. Okay? So it's just basically, guys, imagine in your job. Imagine that in your job, you need to use the computer. But when you are right to your job, your computer is not working. What do you need to do? Ah, they need to fix the computer. Pero mientras arreglan la computadora, ¿qué hacemos? Well, nothing, right? I mean, we just need to wait. So, a esa espera, a esa inactividad, le llamamos equipment downtime. Okay? Because the equipment is, is not available because it's not working. Yes? Better? Better. Okay. Now, we have the next one. Debris beans. What is that? Look. What kind of things do I put inside of the debris bean? What is this? Look at the picture. 
maybe a specific precise for next treatment? Could be. Imagine in this case, we have different companies that they recycle materials, right? But normally we just put trash, the garbage, okay? So this is the debris bins. Do you have debris bins at work? Yes? Or not? What do you think? Is it clear, guys, the meaning? I need to participate, everyone. I can mm -hmm. listen a few people participating. Look at the picture. What is the meaning of the bins? What do you think? Sure. Yes. Uh, maybe, for example, uh, the rebate, the, the wall. The what? The pared, the... How do you say pared? Wall. Wall. Uh, down uh, the wall uh, is broken. Many, many, uh, I don't know, pedazos de pared. But what is that? Do you mean doctors or debris? Bin? Debris, debris. Bin. Ah, okay. Well, listen, guys. If you want to translate it, eso solo son los cubos de basura, okay? That is the translation for debris bin. Okay, what the, is the difference inside of the office? We have the trash can, but the difference is that these ones are closed. It has some wheels over here so you can move it. This is more specific as your classmate said for specific materials, okay? Sometimes if your company recycle in the blue one, we have their specific trash. In the green one, a specific trash. That is the meaning for debris bins. Understood, everyone? Yes. Clear the meaning for the debris bin? Yes, teacher. Great. Then we have the dock doors. Look at the picture. What is the meaning of dock doors? If you are in a warehouse, what are the dock doors? What do you think? Uh-huh, any idea? Basically, son como las puertas principales. It's like the main doors. That is the meaning for dog doors. The characteristic of these doors, guys, is that they are usually in a warehouse and they are big or small. What do you think? Big. Big, exactly. They are big. They are uh, exactly in the warehouse and they receive the name of dog doors. Now we have the aisles. What is the meaning of aisle? It's for, for the, the people work in the warehouse. Correct. We have different aisles. For example, if you go to the supermarket, the little space between the products, that is aisles, okay? Think about the warehouse. In the warehouse, the aisles needs to be narrow or they should be wide. ¿Cómo deberían ser los pasillos in a warehouse? Narrow or they should be wide. What do you think? Narrow? Narrow, like this? ¿Deberían ser estrechitos? Wide. ¿O deberían ser amplios? Wide. Wide. They should be wide so you can have enough space to move the products, right? Okay, now, bend over. What is the meaning of bend over? What do you think? Exactly. This is just when you go down, 
But your back, what happens to your back? Your back bend, doblarse, right? So is this, imagine that you are working in a warehouse. Is this a correct posture? If you want to leave a box, for example, is this a correct posture? No. No, really, right? You can suffer backache. So it's pretty dangerous. And the last one, debris. What is debris? Imagine there is an earthquake and the building suffers some damages. What is this? What is the maybe, meaning of debris? Maybe the example I told you. Ah, yes, exactly. That is the example there. Is, for example, guys, imagine the wall. The wall fell down. <laughs> so that is debris. Translation, please. What do you think? Escombros. Yes. So this vocabulary is the ones that we are going to see in the reading article. Is it clear? The vocabulary, everyone? Teacher, I understand uh, the translation that bend over. Oh, bend over? If you want to translate it, guy, basically it's just like agacharse. Okay, but when we say bend over, it's specifically when you do this movement that uh, your back is bent. Okay? Okay, thanks. Okay, is it clear this vocabulary, everybody? Teacher, sorry, pronunciation uh, at sense times. Absentism. I'm sorry? Absentism. Absentism. Absent Absentism. Absentism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Sure. Yes? Uh, I don't understand yet. Dog doors. Okay. Dog doors, guys, Um, is just basically, listen. Don't try to translate this word literally because in Spanish, the translation, if you translate it literally, doesn't make like a lot of sense. Dog doors, guys, is just basically the main doors in a warehouse. No le decimos solo doors because the characteristic of these ones is that they are big. Normally, some people can call it like... um. Puertas de muelle, algo así, because es donde llegan camiones. You can see the trucks over here. So the trucks, um, sometimes they are able to enter through these doors. So normally these doors, the characteristic is that they are big. That's why they receive the name for dog doors. Okay? Son como las puertas muelle or something like that. Okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it's a uh, it's similar porton. Mm, not really, because the porton guys it's gate. But uh, listen, this is just like a specific term for a warehouse. I mean, you can say only doors. You can say gates. It's all right. Dock doors is just to be specific when we are talking about a warehouse. Okay? Got it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, we are going to practice reading. We are going to read an article. But first, I'm going to check attendance. When you listen to your name, say present. Ana Lorena? Present, teacher. Very good. Boris Alexander? Present, teacher. Okay. Carlos Alberto? Okay. Carlos Ernesto? Present teacher. Okay. Edwin Antonio? Present teacher. Very good. Elias Neftali? Oh, he's listener. Okay. Eulice Torres? Okay. He's listener too. Jose Salvador? 
I'm here, teacher. Very good. Jasmán Atilio. Present. All right. Kevin Alfredo. Present. Very good. Nelson Alberto. Present. Very good. Osman Enrique. Osman? Okay. Uh, let's see. Pamela Cal Carolina. I think she's listener. Yes. Okay. Rafael Alexander. Uh, Rafael. I think he's listener too. Okay. Uh, Santiago Roberto. Okay, and Wilber Alberto. Present. Very good. Okay, let's continue. Now, we are going to read an article, and in that article, we are going to find the vocabulary that we just studied. So I will need, guys, to see procedures. So we are going to read about some instructions about security when we handle uh, dangerous materials. This um, article, guys, is on your manual in the page 32, and I will need volunteers for reading, okay? I have uh, someone who wants to read the first paragraph. Volunteers? Me, teacher. Thank you, go ahead. Okay, there is more to warehouse safety than obedience to fire calls and safety regulations. Unfortunately, to many warehouse and GPLs look at safety as meeting the minimum instructed by the law or their conscience. In the long run, however, a safe warehouse environment, um, environment Del delivers important cost saving through higher employee satisfaction, increased productivity, fewer workplace disruptions, and reduced absenteeism. Absenteeism? Absenteeism and equipment. Absenteeism. What? <laughs> okay, repeat after me. Ab Absentism. Absentism. That is the one. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Downtown. Thank you. Downtime. Okay. Let's review. If you see in this short paragraph, we can see the vocabulary. Do you remember long run? What is that? Long run? Short or long period of time? Short. Long period, long, of period. long period of time. Of time, exactly. So, let's see. I need someone else, please, for reading the next one. Me, teacher. Go ahead. Don't expect employees to start with a culture of safety at work. Establishing a safety culture, including the necessary for per national change changes and training and education programs start with you. Okay, imagine guys, we have a warehouse, as we were discussing in the previous week, I told you that you have to imagine that you are like the managers. So if you want to have a very safety environment, who needs to take the first step? You as a manager or the employees? Who needs to give the example? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Because look at the, the paragraph. It says that if you want to have a safety culture or a culture of safety at work, who needs to be the first one? The employees? Or you as a manager? The manager teacher. Because manager. Uh, he, he is or it is. He is or it is. He no, is. No. He is the example for the employees. Correct. And 
in me in every day if you do activities without save without save actions mm -hmm. uh, your your employees uh imitar imitar imitate imitate you exactly that's totally correct so imagine everybody here uh, basically the people will follow the manager so think about your job is your manager giving you a good example out about culture of safety what do you think yes or no Do you receive a good example of security procedures at work? Yes or no? What do you think? Uh huh. No? Yes, a little bit. Okay, so I the idea is that we can receive a good example. Now, let's see in, the, in this sentence, look at this one. We are going to read, guys, some measures or some rules that we can follow or that the warehouse can implement if they want to have safety measure. Volunteer for reading the first one, please. Letter A. Me. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, letter E, make a. sure that, ah, sorry, A, make sure that garbage and debris bins are available through the warehouse. All right. Do you remember the meaning? Debris bins? Yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was debris bins? The recipient recipients of the uh, for the beans. Yes, it's basically guys the containers for garbage. Okay, that is debris bins. Okay, so think about your company. In your company, do you have debris bins available? Yes or no? What do you think? Uh -huh. Let's participate. Wake up, wake up. So do you have debris bins available in your job, everyone, where you can put the trash? Okay, if you don't answer, I will be asking individually. Nelson um, or Ca sure. okay, Carlos, go ahead. Yeah, in my job, uh, they aren't. They brings beans, really. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is Would... that something positive or something negative? For me, it's negative for the material. Yes, yes. especially yeah. if they are dangerous yeah. materials. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Debris beans? Do you have debris beans as well? Yes. In my office, we have four debris bins. All right, that's something good. So first measure of safety, everyone, make sure that the garbage and the debris bins are available, okay? Now, the second one, volunteer for reading the number two. What is the second measure? Volunteer for reading, guys. You are not participating. Let's wake up and read. Better be block, block access to exposed or open loading dock doors. Thank you. So imagine, guys. Let's think about the dock doors. The door doors they are big, but we need to keep them always open. 
right? If you block the access, is that something positive or negative? Imagine in an emergency, if the doors negative. are blocked. Negative. Yes, right? So we need to be careful with that, to don't block the access, to keep the doors totally free. Letter C, look at the letter C. Keep aisles and pathway clear all the time. So think about your companies. Are the aisles always clear, guys? With no obstacles? What do you think? Uh-huh, in your company? I, my, in my company, teacher, uh, passageways, passageways, uh, clear all, at all times. All the time, that's something positive. Yes. Because um, uh, the move, the material, through the leaf. Uh, I don't remember Montacarga. Okay, yeah. guys, do you remember yeah. how to say that? Well, actually, we are going to see that word, but do you remember? No. Leaf, I don't know. Leaf, <laughs> fork, 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 leaf. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. So you need the space for the fork leaf in order to. Yeah. Uh, the for the reason the aisles, um, will be, uh, wide. Mm hmm. And imagine in that scenario, guys, the aisles. That is one of the reasons why they always need to be clean, all the time. Okay. Letter D, volunteer for reading, letter D. Only one, please. Me teaching. Thank you, go ahead. Keep your back straight, don't bend over, bend over. Do you remember the meaning for bent over? Yes? Yes. Yes. So, Keep your back straight. Straight is like this, okay? Straight. Bend over is like this, okay? So think about your job, everyone. Do you keep your back straight at work or do you usually bend over? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Do you keep your back straight? Yes. Or yeah. not all the time. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's good. So recommendations. Keep your back straight. Okay. Don't bend over. That is a very important measure of security. Letter E. Can you read it, please? Letter E. Okay, teacher. Letter E. Teach employees to post manual material, early the equipment whenever possible, rather than pull locks. Thank you. Okay, this is related to the previous one. Okay, we are going to try to keep the back straight, but for that reason, we need to keep in mind this. If we have some boxes or if we have some materials that are very heavy, so which one or what do we need to do? Do we need to lift the boxes or is it better if we use the correct equipment for that? What do you think? I think teacher, I believe the letter, the letter D, E, E, F. Mm -hmm. uh, are there are related. related related because for example uh, i i stay my my back uh, bent over 
Mm -hmm. uh, they leave the box. I, uh, I can uh, damage my back. Correct. So imagine as your classmate said, it's, it's, he's totally right. Actually, the three ones are related, right? Don't bend your back. I mean, if the material is heavy, guys, it's better if you use the equipment and try to push it instead of lifting, right? If you need to lift a, something, you need, first of all, you need to test if you can lift it or not. And if it is too heavy, guys, or if the box is too big, I mean, you don't try to lift it. It's better to get help. You need to ask for help if you cannot deal with that material, okay? Now, letter G, volunteer for reading. Letter G, please. Me. Thank you. Go ahead. Keep dogs, dogs, yeah, and floor yeah. free of boxes, garbage boxes, building materials, debris, dirt, debris, dirt, and oil. Very good. So the letter G is related with which one? What do you think? Is related with the letter D? Yes or no? What do you think? Letter G is related with the letter D. Keep your back straight and don't bend over. Mm, not no, really, right? Not so really. it's related with what do you letter think? Letter B. With the letter C. C. Okay, letter C. Yes, because we are talking about to keep the aisles clear all the time. With the letter B to keep the doors like uh, not exposed. And also with the letter A, right? Make sure that you have the recipients to keep the trash. Okay. Now the last one, volunteer for reading the last one. Me teacher. Go ahead. Permit access to avoid floors, racks and shelves. Only if portable ladders or appropriate lifting device are available. Thank you. Okay, imagine in this one, guys. Remember, we are talking about a, a warehouse. Okay, so in this case, as your classmate was saying, sometimes they need to use a rung lift and we need to keep appropriate wait in it in order that the devices can pass through all right so it is important guys to keep the access to permit the access to the racks to the shelves in order that if you have or if you need to use a portable ladder you can put it there and you have the appropriate space okay if you need to lift materials it is important that you can have the appropriate space to do it. So the letter H is related with which word, uh, which letter? What do you think? Is it related with the letter E? Yes or no? Or with the letter C? What do you think? Any idea? We are talking about to keep the space clear, to use the correct devices if you need to leave some materials. So maybe this one can be related with, what do you think, which one? Maybe it's related letter B. Letter B, very letter. good. Letter C. With the letter C too, okay. Now listen, these ones are some measures, okay, of security that we can implement. 
We are going to go back to these measures, but first we are going to use a category, okay? And let's see the categories. If I'm talking about general housekeeping, what is that? What do you understand for general housekeeping? What is that? Keeping clear all eyes. Cleaning, right? When you clean, when everything is clean. General housekeeping is the first category. Everything is clean. Falls and other preventable meat shops. What do you understand? This is the second category. What is that? Mm -hmm. And maybe keep in a safe place uh, um, the uh, electrical material. Yes, not only the electrical, actually all of them in order to prevent falls. Do you know what fall is? Caídas. Caídas. Exactly, very good. Number three, the third category is the manual lifting. What is the meaning of manual lifting? The correctly measure to move uh, uh, something, box, or heavy things. Correct. Exactly. Very good. And the number four, forklift and materials handling equipment. What is that? Mm hmm What do you understand for forklift? Look at the picture. This is the word that your classmate was saying. Uh-huh. Is the machine? The use of the machines in order to hand to handle the materials. Listen, guys, there are some boxes that you are not going to be able to lift it manually so you need to use the equipment so these are the categories what we need to do now is we are going to classify the safety measures and we are going to put it here for example let's go back to the article the letter a make sure that the garbage and debris bins are available throughout the warehouse. In which category do I need to put the letter A? In general housekeeping? In falls and other preventable mishaps? In manual lifting or in forklift in materials, handling equipment? What do you think? In general housekeeping? In the general housekeeping, do you agree everyone? Yes. Yes. I agree. Okay. Any other idea, guys? Or do you agree with your classmate? I want to listen to everybody's opinion. Yes. Actually, yes. Remember that in this case, general housekeeping, guys, we are talking about cleaning. And if you see, the letter A is related with cleaning. Excellent job. Now, the letter B, block access to exposed or open loading doors uh, or duct doors. Hmm, where should I put the letter B? What do you think? Any idea? So if I block the doors, am I going to prevent falls? Or I'm talking about manual lifting, or I'm going to talk about forklift and materials equipment. 
what am I talking about? If I am talking about the block access uh, to keep the doors open, what do you think? Maybe enforce and other preventable shops. Okay. And you, everyone? General housekeeping. Okay. General housekeeping, too? Anyone else? I think there will be much faults and other preventable mishaps. Okay. Actually, guys, the correct one is? Yes, in this one. Faults and other preventable mishaps. Remember, we are talking about to prevent falls, to prevent accidents. How can we prevent it? To keep the doors free, okay? Now, Letter C, what is the letter C talking about? Keep the aisles and passways clean all the time. Where should I put the letter C? Mm -hmm. Keep the aisles free. Also another preventable mission. Okay. Do you agree, everybody? Keep yes, the eyes clear all the time. Actually, all yeah, right, we can put it here. We can prevent falls and other kind of accidents, right? And actually, guys, we can also put it here. If I need to use equipment to lift materials like the forklift, do I need the aisles free, yes or no? Sorry, I didn't understand the question, teacher. Sorry. Okay. Imagine in the third, in the fourth category, if I want to use the fork lift, remember the fork lift is, is this, right? This machine. If I want to use it, I need that the aisles can be clear or the time, yes or no? If I yes. have obstacles in the aisles, the forklift is not going to able to pass. So letter C actually can be in both, in both categories. Pretty good. Next one, keep your back straight and don't bend over. Hmm, where should I put this one? Manual lifting. Manual lifting. <laughs> Definitely. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's see the next one. Teach employee to push manual uh, material. Okay. And use equipment if it is possible. What do you think? Where should I put that one? Letter E. Maybe in two, in manual lifting and holding and material handling equipment. Very good. Actually, yes, we, oops, sorry. We can put it in both, right? If you cannot deal with it in the manual lifting, okay, let's use an equipment. Okay, that's a very good one. Okay, the next one. Um, look, if you cannot lift the material, ask for help, but don't forget to always test the heavy, if it is too heavy or not. Where should I put that one? Letter F, what do you think? Uh-huh. No, lifting. Which one? Uh, manual lifting and all lift uh, material and the equipment. In this case, right? I think that is more for manual lifting because if you see guys, it's just talking about lifting and if it is too heavy, ask for help. But it's not talking about the machines. It's not talking about another equipment or another device that you can use. So it is more like just for manual lifting. Okay, the next one, look, keep the doors, keep the floors 
free of boxes, clean, no trash, no garbage. Where should I put that? We are with the letter G. Maybe in general housekeeping mm -hmm. and yes. folds and other preventable shops. It can be in both too. Very good. Imagine, guys, if there is a lot of garbage on the floor, I mean, we can have an accident, all right? So this one is related with both. Excellent job. Okay, and the last one, look. Uh, permit access uh, to above floor racks, shelves. We are talking about the portable leathers, the use of lifting devices. So where should I put that one? Letter H. Holes and other preventable mishaps. All right. Do you agree, everyone? Basically, yeah, right? If we keep everything in order, we can prevent different accidents. So these are different categories, guys, when we are talking about security measures. This is something that can be implemented not only in the warehouse, but also in different companies. Clear the vocabulary? Yes? Is it clear the vocabulary about measures of safety or security measures? Yes, teacher. Okay, tomorrow I will ask you the vocabulary. So let's see if you remember it. Okay, any questions so far? No questions? Okay, well, that was just a little reading comprehension. It is important, guys, if you see, sometimes it's not necessary to understand every single word. Sometimes it's not necessary to translate it literal into Spanish, okay? The idea is to read a sentence and try to get the main idea. That is what you have to do, okay? Now, but let's stop talking a little bit about the safety security and let's review guys a little bit the first conditional. Do you remember the first conditional? Yes, a little bit. Yes, teacher. Yes? Okay, if I want to use the first conditional, what is the structure that I need to follow? Using if okay, you. I need if and then what else? What else? <laughs> Do I need a sentence in simple present, in simple past, in if simple future, present, in, in simple, simple present. present? Okay, and then what else do I need? Everyone, try to remember. Oh my gosh, Solo, only, only Anna remembers. And the rest of you guys? Let's review. Oh, it's Monday. Mm, that is a problem. <laughs> so try to remember. Okay, if, for example, if I say, okay, guys, if I can't sleep tonight, I, ta, 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 so I need another sentence. What will be the sentence? In a future sentence. Very good. We need future. And what is the auxiliary that I use in future? Will. Will. Correct. So I need future using will. And the clear example is that, okay, if I can't sleep tonight, oops, coma, I will uh, watch TV, for example, okay? So, hey, chair. yes? Uh, 
what happened if I change the second sentence? Uh, if I can say, if I want to say, uh, if I can't sleep tonight, I'm going to watch TV. It, it, it is the first conditional also? No, really. What happens, guys, and here we need to check a difference. When we use will, it's not 100% guaranteed. Remember that this is just for possibilities. Okay? And if you use going to, I mean, when we use be going to, for example, ah, I'm going to ta 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 ta. Be going to, guys, is not for possibilities. This is more for plans. Okay? And what is the function? Last week, we studied the function of the first conditional. And the function is not about plans. The first conditional function is about possibly scenarios in the future. So that's why, guys, in the first conditional, we only use will. We don't use be going to. Got it? Yes? Okay. Pretty good. I'm going to share with you some sentences. So we are going to see the scenarios. But also, guys, remember that in your manuals, you can see this box with some examples. This is in the page 31st or 31. Remember that if you don't want to use if, what is the other word that you can use? You can use when. So we can replace it. For example, let's take the same example. You can say, eh, if I can't sleep tonight, I will eh, watch a movie. Or you can replace it and you can say, when I can't sleep, I will watch a movie, for example. It's not common to use it, but sometimes you can replace it, okay? Now, look at the next scenarios and tell me what will be the conditional. Let's try to use your imagination. I'm going to open up the exercise, but here, guys, I will be asking individually because I want to everybody participate, okay? Um, let me open up the exercise. Give me a second. Du, 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 ten. Okay, let's. Everyone, can you see it? Yes. Okay, let me pick someone. Du, 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 ten. I'm going to pick. Josman, Josman Atilio. Hello, Josman. Give me a number. Hello. Uh, number one. Okay. Complete the sentence. Use your imagination. Uh huh. I remember this moment. Okay, I have the sentence in simple present. If I study English, now we need to add another sentence, but in future. So what happens if you study English? What will happen? Uh, I will approve the exam. Ah, very good. So you can say, okay, if I study English, I will approve the exam. What else, guys? What will happen if you study English? I will speak as an uh, American native. Very good. Yes. What else? If I study English, 
I will. Mm -hmm. Any other idea? English. I will speak in English. <laughs> yes. So if I study English, I will speak in English. Pretty good. Okay, let's see. So, Atilio, remember, after the sentence in simple present, you just need to add a sentence in future. Got it? Yes? Okay. Lorena, give me a number, please. Six. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, if it rains tomorrow, I will, I will uh, sleep early. <laughs> okay, sounds good. How about you guys? What will happen if it rains tomorrow? I agree with Anna. <laughs> you will sleep early. Okay, sounds good. Anyone else? What will you do if it rains tomorrow? Maybe I will use um umbrella. Very good. I will use an umbrella. That's a good idea. Very good. So, uh, Lorena, pick one of your classmates, please. Um, Nelson? Nelson, give me a number, please. Come on. <laughs> Seven? Seven. Okay, complete the sentence. If my friend has a birthday, um, I will. Um, I will purchase a gift. Very good. That's a good idea. How about you guys? What will you do if your friend has a birthday? I will give him a gift. Very good. I will give him a gift. Very good. Nelson, pick one of your classmates, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jose Salvador. All right, Salvador, are you there? Yes. Give me a number, please. Number two. Okay. Complete the sentence. If my mom needs help, mm -hmm. I, I will. I will help, help, help her. Help her. I will help her. Very good. So if my mom needs help, of course, I will help her. Pretty good. Salvador, pick one of your classmates, please. Edwin. Edwin, give me a number, please. Number four. Okay. Hmm, complete the sentence. If I finish my homework early, I will go out tonight. <laughs> Very good. Okay, sounds good. How about you guys? What will happen if you finish your homework early? Uh -huh. If I finish my homework early, uh -huh. I will go to the vet early. Very good. Yes, that's a good idea. Pretty good. Okay, let's see. Volunteer, three or five. Who wants to try? Number five. Five, okay. Go ahead. If the weather is good tomorrow, I will go a party. Very good. 
could, I will go to a party. How about you guys? What will you do if the weather is good tomorrow? I will wash the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes? Okay. The clothes. And you guys? If the weather is good tomorrow? Uh, maybe if the weather is good tomorrow, I won't the use umbrella. Tomorrow. Very good. And that is a very nice example because remember, guys, we can give affirmative sentences, but also negative sentences. If the weather is good tomorrow, I won't use an umbrella. Pretty good. Negative. Remember that want is just the contractions of will not. Pretty good job. Okay, the last one. Look at this one. If I meet my friends, remember that in this case, the meaning of meet is like to have a meeting. Okay, so if I have a meeting with my friends, for example, what will you do or what will happen if you have a meet or a meeting with your friends? Uh -huh. I, if I meet my friends, I will have a party. <laughs> nice. Okay. How about you guys? If you meet your friends, what will you do? What will happen? Will you eat something? Will you watch a movie? Will you drink something? Will you go somewhere? Give me ideas. I will talk about one year ago. Very good. I will talk. Excellent. What else? Any other idea? Okay, so you can say different sentences. Just remember that you have to use future. Ah, if I meet my friends, I will eat pizza. Ah, if I meet my friends, I will talk to them. Ah, we will have a party. We will go to the beach, okay? Different sentences, just don't forget the structure, guys. First, I need the sentence in simple present. And then the result is in simple future using will. That is the structure of the first conditional. Is it clear, everyone? Yes? Yes. Any questions so far? It's okay. Yes, are you sure? Ready for an exam? Yes, teacher. Definitely sure. <laughs> okay, pretty good. I hope so, I hope so. Okay, let's have another practice. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 let me open up the exercise. I'm going to show you some sentences. And you have to tell me what will be the correct structure. Yes? Can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, look at the question, everyone. Do you believe in superstitions? Yes or no? For example, some people say, ah, if you see a black cat, what will happen if you see a black cat? Have you ever listened to that? Ah, if you see a black cat, you will have bad luck. Seven ah. years of bad luck. Seven years, oh my uh, no. Really? Oh, but that is an example. So do you believe in that? Uh-huh. No. No, Lorena? No, I say that seven years is for the mirror broken. Oh, that's another example. If you break a mirror, 
you will have like I think that it was 10 but... <laughs> okay seven <laughs> years okay let's complete the sentences for example the number one if you so I have if I need a sentence in simple present or in simple past or in simple future. If I have the sentence with if, what do you think? Simple, simple present. present. Very good. So uh, indoors, do you know what is the meaning for indoors? Yes. Indoors is like inside of your house, for example. So if you open an umbrella indoors, what will happen? It, complete the sentence, please. Will bring, but look. Very yeah. good. It will bring, mm -hmm. but luck. So is that true, guys? Do you believe in that? Yes or no? What do you think? No, I don't. No, it's not true? Well, some people believe it, right? That they are very superstition, but we never know. Number two, what will be the number two? If you, and I have the verb see, what will be the sentence here? Uh-huh. Can I say, if you will see? Is that correct? No. So what is the correct one? If will, mm -hmm. if you see. Ah, very good. If you see two magpies, do you Mag know what it is? No. This is a kind of bird. It's similar to the doves, to the pigeons. Do you know what pigeon is? Es similar a las palomas? So it's, a, it's some birds similar to those ones. So some people think that if you see these kind of animals, complete the sentence. You will be lucky. Ah, you will be lucky. What is the meaning of lucky? Suertudo. Yes, Suertudo. excellent. Okay, I will give you one sentence each one. So guys, you have to complete the sentence. Number three, it will be for Lorena. Number four, it will be for, let's see, Carlos Ernesto. Number five, it will be for Edwin. Da, 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 da. Number six, it will be for Josman. Number seven, it will be for Salvador. And the number eight, it will be for, let's see, let's see, Wilbur. Okay, guys, let me know when you have your sentence ready. Okay, teacher, if you break a mirror, uh -huh. you will have seven years of bad luck. Okay, do you believe in that, Lorena? No, in my house, I have some broken, <laughs> some mirror broken. Oh my gosh. Okay. And you don't have bad luck? I believe that no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pretty good. Who's next? Who's ready? Mm, number four. Yes. Okay. If you walk under the ladder. Mm hmm. Um, something bad it will happen to you okay something bad will it's not necessary to say it okay it's okay. just something bad will happen because in this case the subject is this something bad that is the subject that's why it's not necessary to say it again so Carlos, only, only will happen exactly yes so, Carlos, do you believe in that? Do you believe that if you walk under a ladder, something bad will happen to you? A long time, yes. By <laughs> now, no. <laughs> so, you don't believe in that anymore? <laughs> no, I associate uh, superstition with 
Ignorancia. Ignorance. Ignorance. Mm, okay. Maybe. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, who's next? Who's ready? Edwin, Osman, Salvador. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You will have bad luck if you put your shoes on the table. Okay. You will, I'm sorry, you have or you will have. Can you repeat? You will have. Okay. If you, da, 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 look at this. Edwin, do you believe in that? Mm, not. Um, I don't. <laughs> and you guys, if you put your shoes on the table, it means bad luck. Do you believe in this? Yes? No, teacher. No. no. So you are not superstitious. Okay. Now, pay attention to this sentence. Because if you see, the first sentence is not starting with if. We start with future. And the connector if is in the middle. So this is something that we studied in the previous week. That we can switch the order of the sentences. Okay, Josman, Salvador, Wilbur, who's ready? Me. Okay, Salvador, go ahead. If you blow out all, all the candles on your birthday cake with mm -hmm. one brief, you will get what you wanted. Okay. Do you believe in that, Salvador? No. No? It's just a superstition? No. Okay. Pretty good. So look, if the sentence start with if, that's the sentence in simple present. The result is in future. Next one, Josman or Wilbur, give me your sentence, guys. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a blood cut cross your path. You will have bad look. Okay, Cr cross and then you will have okay is something interesting in this sentence if a black cat is this singular or plural what do you think singular singular, singular. so mm, because it's simple present oops sorry is that third person yes or no yes Process? Yes. Ah, Process. so can I say cross? Crosses. Ah, we need to say crosses. Okay. Crosses. So remember that in this scenario, guys, we follow the rules as in simple present. If it is third person, let's make the changes. If a black cat crosses your path, you will have bad luck. <laughs> Do you believe in that, Osman? Is that true that you will have bad luck or not? No, for me, no. Not really, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wilbur, go ahead. Give me the last one. Okay. You will be smart if you eat fish. Okay. You will be smart if you eat fish. So what do you think, Wilbur? Is that true? Not at all. I mean, uh, the fish has uh, the he it it sound vitamins, mm -hmm. but it's not necessary. I will be smart. Yeah, it has a lot of vitamins, right? <laughs> it's not true that you will be automatically smart. You will be healthier. That's true, but smarter? <laughs> well, maybe not, right? So if you see, guys. We are using a simple present plus future to use first conditional. Again, guys, when we are talking about first conditional, we are talking about possibly scenarios in the future. It's not 100% true. Understood the structure of this uh, first conditional, everybody? Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Any questions so far? 
No questions? Okay. So good so far. So far so good. Great. Okay, I'm going to check attendance again and then we're going to have another practice. So when you listen to your names, say present. Ana Lorena? Present teacher. Very good. Boris Alexander? Okay, I think he's listener. Okay. Carlos Alberto? Present teacher. Okay. Present teacher. I'm okay. sorry. It's okay, Boris. No worries. Uh, Carlos Ernesto? Present teacher. Very good. Edwin Antonio? Present teacher. Very good. Um, Elias Neftali, I think he's listener. Eulice Torres, well, I think he's listener too. Jose Salvador? I'm here, teacher. Great. Osman Atilio? Present. Very good. Kevin Alfredo? Present, teacher. Excellent. Nelson Alberto? Present. Very good. Osman Enrique? Okay. Pamela Molina? I think he's listener too. Okay, she's listener. Okay. Rafael Alexander? Oh, he's listener too. Okay, Santiago Roberto? Okay, and Wilbert Alberto. Present teacher. Excellent, pretty good. Okay, let's have another practice, okay? And we are going to talk, okay? I want you to talk using the first conditional. Would you like to be politicians, everyone? <laughs> yes? No? Would you like to be the next president of El Salvador? Uh-huh. Yes or no? What do you think? Not really. No? No. And you guys, imagine, be the president. You will have a good salary, guys. Okay, look, we are going to our country, okay? So, if you want to be the good candidate, you need to present your promises, okay? You need to present your ideas and convince your classmate to vote for you. For that, we are going to use the first conditionals. For example, I can say, okay, everybody, if you vote for me, look, first conditional, I have if, I have the sentence in simple present, and then I have the sentence in future. If you vote for me, everybody, I will increase security, okay? I, everybody, if you trust me, simple present, and then future, look, my team and I will generate more jobs for young people. Ah, if you vote for me, I will give you more money. I don't know, invent, okay? In this moment, guys, I want you to think about your ideas, think about your promises, and the idea, guys, is that you had to try to convince your classmate to vote for you. Is it clear, the activity? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. I need you to think, guys, in at least three promises. Okay? Present the ideas to your classmates. And let's see if you can convince them, okay? Think about their ideas in this moment. I will send the, the instructions on WhatsApp's group so you can keep it there. Remember, you can use affirmative or negatives. Ah, if you vote for me, I want ta 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 ta. Ah, if you vote for me, I will and ta 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 ta. Give ideas. So for this activity, we are going to go to the breakup rooms, okay? Um, because we have a lot of listeners, I need to know, guys, the ones that are going to participate. Teacher. Voy a tomar a los que están sin la palabra listener. Asumo que los que Teacher. no tienen palabra listener porque van a participar. Okay, yes? I'm going to change uh, as a listener. Why? 
I'm sorry, I cannot find now. Okay, all right. So I assume, guys, that the other ones are ready to participate, okay? Let's see. Okay, if you are in a group that you only have listeners and you want to participate, you can tell me and I can switch it to another team, okay? Now, do you have your promises ready, everyone? Yes? Yes. Excellent, okay, let's see. Give me a second, I'm just creating the groups. Okay, let's go to work. Pay attention to your classmates. And at the end, you have to tell me which is going to be the candidate that you will vote for. Let's go to work. Okay. I listen. You okay, listen. perfect. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, who the first? <laughs> Maybe you. Uh, okay. For example, if I vote, vote for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will work for the down 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 class. I don't know down class. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, other idea. <laughs> In my case, uh, if you vote for me, I will uh, uh, give. The Friday is free. No day off. Huh? No. Ah, uh, no. Okay, okay. Friday free. For half, uh, uh, three days. Um, maybe um, I will. If you vote for me, I will work for a cleaning series. Okay. Nice. <laughs> uh, Edwin. Yes. Um, if you vote for me, um, I will uh, reduce the work hours. Uh huh. Did you finish? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking in the last. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. Finish. Wow. Fast. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay, I start. I will start. Uh, if you choose me as a president, I will reduce laboral hours to 30 hours. It's a it's not a nice benefit <laughs> profit no no uh, no benefits. Yeah, you will be able to get a good job and you will retire at forty five years. It's my three benefits. Huh. 
Osman. Okay. If you trust me, my team and, and I, I will generate some more opportunity learning in the school. I need freedom every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what uh, for me next year? I win her than Nagit Bukele. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you will win. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> hmm, I will think. Es eh, Salvador. If if you vote for me, I will invest the man in the education of children and young people. Okay. Okay. More benefits. <laughs> that idea okay tell me according to your classmate ideas will you vote for them will you vote for nelson definitely <laughs> sure <laughs> uh -huh. Osman, will you vote for nelson lo convenció no. did, did he convince no. you no, no. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> okay, Salvador, how about you? Will you vote for Nelson? You will retire at 45 <laughs> years. Come on. That's a good idea. It's a good benefit. Yeah. Well, so, Salvador, will you vote for Nelson? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, Nelson, you have one vote already. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that. The okay. ideas are good. You have very good promise. <laughs> what happens, Nelson, is that they don't believe you. Mm. Mm, my. <laughs> they don't uh, believe in I you. I will do, I will try uh, to, to, to make that they trust in me. That's a good idea. Try. Yeah, with <laughs> with, uh, with uh, hechos, I don't know. Actions. I forget the actions, yeah. With actions. My actions uh, speak, speak for me. That's great. Excellent. Speaking for me. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, because of the time, uh, Salvador, did he present his idea? Excuse me? Did you present your promises, Salvador? Hmm. One, only one. one. Salvador, we need more promises. <laughs> okay, think about more. Think about more ideas. Let's go back to the main room and we will continue practicing there, okay? Let's okay. Go okay. So, okay, let's wait for everyone. Some of your classmates are still in the breakup rooms. Okay, everyone, let's go back. Okay, let's see there are some of your classmates here in the breakup rooms let's go back everyone okay interesting promises that i was listening okay let me ask lorena uh, will you vote for someone <laughs> did they convince you yes ah who is going to be the candidate for you Edwin. Really? Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. Can you tell me his promises? 
Edwin or me? Yeah, the Edwins, the ones that convince you. <laughs> if she votes for me, I will do party it weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, everybody, do you think that that's a good promise? <laughs> <Bien amiga. laughs> okay. Let's see, let's see. I will be asking guys one promise each one. So let's start with Hosman Atilio. Hosman Atilio, give me one of your promises. Pay attention, everyone. Okay. If you trust me, my team and I will generate more opportunity learning in the school and eat free every day. You can eat free every day? Yeah. But in the ah, only in the school. I, I was, I was no. like, wow, <laughs> we can eat free. <laughs> no, in the school. <laughs> only, only in the school, everyone. In the school, yeah. That's include high school and university or only school? All learning, school and university. Oh, my goodness, everyone. I like that idea. <laughs> sounds good, sounds good. Uh, Nelson, tell me one of your promises. If you choose me as a president, I will reduce laboral hours to 30 hours. Okay. Both for me. But the salary? Mm, Is the same? No, but uh, I'm thinking about that. Ah, less hours, yeah. less money. No. The money is another topic, but <laughs> coming soon. Suspicious. I don't know yeah. if that sounds suspicious. <laughs> no, come on. Let's vote. <laughs> Let's vote. I like okay. that. Okay. Okay. Lorena, tell me one of your promises. If you vote for me, I will uh, give a free internet for all the people. For everyone? Yes. Yeah. Wow, everybody, free internet. Okay. I heard I like that, that promise in somebody else. <laughs> and free he, laptop. He, he, he is right now in a, in a hell, jail. 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 <laughs> Where do I sign? <laughs> I like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Carlos Ernesto, tell me one of your promises. Uh. Let's see, if I vote for me, I will give 40 hours of work weekly. And <laughs> I will day off in your birthday. <laughs> you will have day off. And, and, I, and I will three weeks of vacation annual. <laughs> oh, look at that, guys. You will have three weeks of vacations. <laughs> okay. Wilbert? Tell us one promise. Uh, if you pro if you vote for me, I promise uh, the class will end in when well, right now. Ah, boo! <laughs> no, I'm not going to vote for you. <laughs> okay. No. Let's see. What? Let's wait. Give me a minute. I just want to listen to everyone. Salvador, tell me your promise. If you vote for me, uh -huh. I will invest the money in the education of children and young people. Ah, look at that one. He's thinking about younger people in education. Sounds good. Kevin, tell me one of your promises. If you vote uh, for me, I will give you an airplane and a million dollars. To everyone? <laughs> For everyone. <laughs> really? I don't know where nah, we are going. Please I don't, I don't have the space for the airplane in my house. <laughs> and a million dollars. Ah, okay. Everybody, do you like that? False. Idea? I don't know, Rick. Yeah, that's in false. Suspicious. <laughs> okay, uh, Edwin, your promise, please. So I didn't remember. <laughs> if you but for me, I 
uh, I reduce the. I will. Work, I reduce the uh, work hours. How many hours? Uh, six hours a day. Mm, okay. And the salary, it will be the same or it will reduce too? It will be the same. Ah, I like Can you be. listen, Nelson. Do you listen? He offers the same salary. Okay, I don't know if Carlos Dominguez, are you there, Carlos? Did you think about a promise? I don't know if he's listening. Okay, I think he is. Okay, very good promises. So, guys, who is your favorite candidate? Pick someone before leaving. Uh huh. Please vote for me. <laughs> I will give you a airplane and one million dollars, Lorena. One million dollars. Who will you vote for? Heavy, but I hope for my million of yeah, dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will be. I'll be waiting to. Okay, everyone. Um, this is just an example of how the uh, first conditional works. If you listen to the candidates, they are using first conditional. Okay, so now you are using it too. Well, we don't have more time. Thank you so much for staying, guys. Please try to review the platform if you haven't finished. Remember that this is like the last week that we have. We are going to continue tomorrow. Have a good night. See you guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye.